If I can just go right there. Ralph Russo, Associated Press, joins us now. Sigum 365 Radio, 365 Sports. Uh, Ralph, uh, thanks for hopping on the show today. Um, what to, you know, we we have we've had you on several times. Uh, what is your uh, mindset now covering this game after yet again another summer of craziness in college football? <laughs> yeah, it's it has been three pretty wild years, starting with. Uh, the COVID year last year was sort of like the year of the Supreme Court and NIL decision. And now, you know, we've got just another round of, 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 of um, um, realignment, television rights deals. I, I guess what I, what I kind of feel like is I, I, I find myself not writing that much about players and coaches anymore, mm-hmm. uh, but more about policy and law and antitrust law and television value and things along those lines, which, you know, it, it's, it's an important part of the sport and it certainly makes things interesting. I certainly don't mind covering those issues, but they really have overwhelmed the on the field stuff uh, for the last couple of years. And, and frankly, that's a little disappointing. That's a little disappointing. But once we get into the season, it, it definitely we're able to shift it more towards the on the field not not completely there's still a lot of issues going on but more toward on the field where do you see the tide going now that we know mostly what the big 10 tv deal is going to be uh i guess the only thing we haven't really heard is what the streaming part is and and that and and you know how no, you know Notre Dame's kind of thrilled about that deal because it's good for them no matter what they do where do you think the the tide is turning as it go as it yeah, as, as far as realignment goes. Yeah, I mean, I think the the piece that needs to be sorted out is more more quickly is is Pac-12 Big Twelve, right? Like what what's going on, and and they're related in so far as I think you know the Pac-12 teams have to figure out like do we want to move forward together? I think that's their number one preference, but there's a lot of reasons why you know that could fall apart. Um, and, and all of a sudden that they're kind of looking at each other thinking, first of all, the Big Ten could go shopping again. It does not feel like that is imminent. I can't stress this enough. Like, I don't think there is any, like, sort of urgency within the Big Ten offices to get bigger sooner, but I also think that there is, like, real deliberation here and real, like, sort of like, okay, what kind of value – is left on the board beyond Notre Dame. And I think it, because it's not obvious value, it, it sort of, it sort of decreases the lack of urgency here, but it does sort of linger over everything like a cloud. And I think for the SEC, there's sort of this like, well, if we, if the Big Ten moves, do we have to move? We're really not looking to make a move. So there's sort of these like dark clouds on the horizon, but nothing really imminent. And if you take away that, it, it's sort of like, okay, Pac-12, what do you want to do? Like, do you, you want to hang together or you think you're going to fall apart here and that could, it provides an opening for the Big 12? And I don't think anything we're going to – I don't think we're going to know anything exactly on the Pac-12 maybe for another couple of months as they sort of move out of their exclusive window negotiating their TV contract with ESPN and maybe shop around a little bit. So I guess – and not to be long-winded, there is a there is an option here where ESPN gives them just the right number that they want, and they scoop it up. Hey, it's a complicated topic. I mean, there's, there's not really a yeah. short way to answer it, but I, I do have this question about kind of the higher uh, parts of leadership at, in universities. Ralph, uh, I'm sure you saw the news about uh, Oregon's president uh, moving yeah. over to, to Northwestern, <laughs> and I saw all the, the reaction of like, oh, my gosh, what, is, what does that mean really anything when it comes to the college athletics part of this? <laughs> I mean – so you have to understand the presidents do hold a lot of sway. And that's a president in Oregon president, uh, Michael Schill, I believe his name was a chili at Schill, um, who is very involved in athletics. He's on like NCAA boards and college football playoff oversight stuff. So that's a president who has a, who has a role in athletics. And then you sort of extrapolate that out to the idea that when, when conferences decide on teams to take or schools to invite, the presidents have a lot of say in that. So I think you start drawing these conclusions, but probably jumping to conclusions that it means something. Mm-hmm. I saw my colleagues sort of doing the same thing, and I was, I was tempted to tweet, 
I don't know what this means, but here's something. Like, because right. I, I don't like, I don't know if we really know what it means, but like, there's clearly you could sort of start like connecting dots, right? If you really wanted to, I would say at the very least, Oregon would have some support on the board, and that's that's where. I would, you know, of the presidents in the Big Ten, if it comes to that, but that's the last thing I think I could, I could even safely assume. Yeah, and, and you know, the way it's been described to me is, like, I think that again, there's a value cal- calculation here going on with all these other te- all these other schools, and they've already done a lot of work on Oregon and Washington and Stanford, and and just like they they have a, they've done their homework. Let's put it that way. And I think they sort of understand sort of what's on the board. And then it's a matter of like evaluating where does the, you know, where, how does it help us? Um, so, you know, again, does it help to have an advocate in the room? Might, it might, but, but, but it's, it's hard to really tell now. It definitely was one of those moments where like, I don't know what this means, but it seems very exciting. Yeah, you know? <laughs> absolutely. That was exactly my reaction to it. I was like, I don't know, but hey, let's see if it does matter. You know, we'll, we'll figure it out as we go. But uh, Ralph, the uh, college football playoff, it's set up its schedule for uh, its rankings releases. And obviously that's a big piece, you know, when all the Big Ten, uh, or not even just the Big Ten, but all the media days, hoopla was going on and all these quotes were flying left and right. One of the big ones was obviously having to do with some changed feelings uh, per se on the the playoff uh, where do you think we sit with that and any evolution or changes to it are we sitting pat for a while or how do you kind of view that at this point after all that's taken place over the last few months so yeah they're going to start meeting again and digging into this stuff in the next uh, you know couple of months I, I think they have a couple of schedules and there could be a couple more over between like late august and mid october and I wouldn't be surprised if you got some momentum moving more, a little more quickly now. I, I do think that, you know, the Big Ten sort of has loosened this, its stance. And listen, again, I don't want to be super long-winded. We can go into the minutia of, I think, of all this wrangling, but let's not do that. I, I'll just safe to say that I think there's an opportunity here for after last year's snarled traffic jam for things to sort of open up. And everybody just sort of finally get on the same page. I'm not, I know a lot of people were very excited about this idea of 16 and it sort of made the rounds. And I'm not saying that they're not talking about a lot of different options, but I don't know if that was, if there was sort of like, that was portrayed as momentum towards 16, as opposed to just like, Hey man, we're talking about a lot of things and sure. We're going to talk about 16 too. Yeah, the the twelve team proposal that they had last year, I mean, it almost brought a tear to my eyes. A college football fan, Ralph, it, it seems so well uh, thought out. You know, as far as yeah. all yeah. these things, and <laughs> you know, like they they really did sit in a room and say, well, what if this happens? What if this happens? They had for the first time in a long time, it was a college football plan that had answers to a lot of questions, and then it got wrangled up because of like you said minutia so i would think that throwing 16 maybe makes 12 like it just seems like well we agreed on 12 but 16 was in there it seems like one of those things you throw out politically so it seems like everybody came to an agreement that they'd already come to a year ago yeah i mean there could be a little of that i I wouldn't be surprised if we end up getting to what we were talking about last year which would be quite ironic to have wasted a year and go to the land exactly where you were. Um, I just haven't figured out what the, what the motivations for 16 are. I really did. I, I'm with you. I, when I, when I sketch these things out on my notepad, when I'm on long flights, like uh, the, the 12 thing, even before they unleashed it sort of like had a lot of good answers to some of the questions I was asking. Uh, and I, and I thought, I thought it, 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 it checked a lot of boxes too. And it still does to me. So I, I still feel like that's the right answer but you know listen uh, you know all of a sudden the sec's got to re- re- readjust or and, the, and you just have now these constituencies sort of getting in their corners again and saying well you know what what did i want the last time that i didn't get li- that i didn't get maybe i'm going to try to get that this time right you just have some of the some of the power brokers who have a little more leverage now might want to throw a little weight around on some things and my guess is that 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 isn't ends up being in the realm of who has automatic access to this thing. Ralph, this is a very generic question because I was thinking about asking you about your piece on the you know, the ESPN, the TV rights. But like you said, we don't talk a whole lot of college football. What are one or two 
kind of college football storylines that are intriguing to you as we get closer? Yeah, I think, listen, I think the most interesting part of this season playing out on the field is, and maybe this is me trying to like encourage people to embrace, uh, embrace the fun, right? Mm -hmm. Like, I, I don't know if the national championship race is going to be particularly fun. I, I really do think that you have sort of Alabama, Georgia, Ohio State on a little bit of a different level than any of everybody else this year as far as their roster composition. But, but do not fret. I think beyond that, it looks like a muddled mess. I, I, like I, I, you know, the, the, the AP college football poll, uh, preseason poll is going to come out on Monday, August 15th. Um, we like to think that that's the standard, but you know, whatever. Um, <laughs> so, so, and if you, and if you start, like, I, I don't want to reveal what's what, but I think once you get past, you know, what you might assume to be the top three, I think everybody's got a ton of questions. And I think that like last year could lead to a lot of interesting races and conferences and a lot of maneuvering around. I think it's really going to be hard to pin down who the second you know, what the second tier of contenders are. And to me, that could make for a really exciting season. Uh, Ralph, do you, I mean, without revealing, do you, do you see teams like just say in the other poll that have been a little bit overrated in your estimation? Um, pr probably a little bit. I, again, I hate to, I hate to bash the coaches poll. I mean, you know, listen, the Texas thing, I'm sure you guys have talked about <laughs> yeah. that. That was weird. Yeah, that was weird. Um, you know, the other thing, too, is, though, I will say this. Because we, and I, when I say we, not we, the AP, I mean we, the sort of college football, you know, industrial complex media, <laughs> which is honestly even include you, right? Like, it's just all of us. We start ranking teams the day after the national championship game for the next season. Yep. So I think it's really hard. To not ending up and to not end up with a little bit of a group think because we've been sort of going through this process of January way way too early and then there's post spring and then there's this and then there's post portal and so I do think that you end up getting sort of like a story or a narrative that like sort of lands as the season goes on so by the time you get to pre quote unquote preseason polls I, I think a pecking order has been set to a certain degree so you may have slight variances but i don't think you're going to have wild variances between what between people's opinions and I, I just don't know what to what to do about that i think it's just it's just the nature of where we are in that right now i would love to to just hear the pitch from the one person who gave texas that vote <laughs> oh, just to hear what they think that the rest of us wouldn't at this point from a team that was five and seven a year ago because there might be some really interesting insight in that so I don't want to call out coaches because I don't think that's fair. But, of course, myself and everybody else looked at that list and started going through, okay, there's two possibilities here. A, somebody was trolling Texas. Mm -hmm. B, somebody is like sort of like buddies with Sark. Right? <laughs> and just like has maybe too much respect. And, like, and again, like I really don't want to call people out, so I'm not going to do that because it's kind of reckless, reckless speculation. But like you definitely went through the list and went like, Oh, I could see that. Yeah, I could see this guy maybe just like thinks very highly of Texas because he's got some association uh, with that staff. And but again, I think what that was more interesting is to try to figure out what coach might be trolling Texas. <laughs> yeah. I don't, I don't like the one that came to mind to me first and foremost is actually not on the panel. Like I could see Chip Kelly doing that. <laughs> I, could, I could see Chip Kelly sort of being like, "Out oh, of hell with this! I'm just going to put Texas on top." <laughs> so. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, Ralph, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, you know, looking forward to the poll release on Monday um, and uh, looking forward to the actual season where we can talk about, you know, uh, running backs and quarterbacks and yeah. defense and all that stuff that we normally do and not uh, the minutia of television contracts, which unless we're in television, we all don't completely understand. Yeah, yeah. I've, I've somehow become like I've needed a law degree to do my job the last couple of years. And I, nobody ever nobody ever told me I needed that. Yeah. Uh, you know, what? that just made me think of another question, Ralph, to, to close this on. Oh, out. Sure. What, what do you think of sort of the year round nature that college football has now taken thanks to recruiting having boomed over you know the last couple decades? That's been a, a work in progress where it's just gotten so big now. But that helped to kind of 
keep the offseason moving along. But now you have all of the other things attached to it. Uh, it's like the NFL turned into, ultimately, where there is no offseason. What do you make of that as somebody who covers the sport? Yeah, it, it's hard to take vacations. Uh, but, yeah. that's not, but, don't, but please don't please don't feel sorry for me. I got a great job. No, I, I, would, I, I actually – I know people like bristle about transfer portals and how coaches bounce everywhere and things like that. But I think if you just look at the model for pro sports, if you have off-season transactions uh, and player movement, it does really increase the interest in a sport. It keeps you people engaged in the off-season and between recruiting and transfers and, you know, coach movement. There's so much of that now in college sports. Again, like I understand people sort of cringe, oh, I don't want it to be pro sports, but the pro sports will model will show you that when you engage people in the off-season that way, you, you build fandom. Ralph Russo, Associated Press. Ralph, thanks for hopping on the show. Thanks, guys. Always great to talk to Ralph and uh, an interesting insight there. That again, yeah, you have to, you 